Let's give God some praise. He's worthy. Twenty years of ministry, and and we're just beginning. How do we know? Because the vision is bigger than the present. How do you know God's not done with you? He gives you vision. There is an actual warfare against you being able to see what God wants you to see. When Jesus said that He would come to give sight to the blind. He wasn't just talking about physical blindness. He was also talking about spiritual blindness, which is called hopelessness, which is called doubt and unbelief. And we're believing by the time you're done with these three, four days that we're the, of, of, of a growth conference, that God's gonna heal your mind, heal your spiritual eyes, so you can see the future that God has for you and your family and your business and your church. We are going to come against the spirit of spiritual blindness in the name of Jesus. We're going to come against every spirit of hopelessness in the name of Jesus. We're going to come against every spirit of doubt and unbelief in the name of Jesus. We're going to come against every spirit of suicide and death in the name of Jesus. We're going to come against every spirit of addiction in the name of Jesus. Because who the Son sets free is free indeed or is free for real. We're, we're going to war in these next three days. The Bible says my people perish for lack of knowledge. And what he wants, this is what he wants. This is spiritual warfare. There is a real devil and his job is to keep you ignorant. He wants you to keep you careless or not even make you realize the real battle that you're in, the real struggles that you're in, or make you start accepting some things that you should be rejecting. We're here, we're here to wake up a spiritual giant in the spirit. We're believing that God, come on, his plans for this nation, his plan for your family, his plan for this world. We're believing that the greatest move of God we have not seen yet. And God is saying, I'm preparing you, get ready. Come on, let's get informed. Let's get an impartation. Let's get right with God. You know, the sermon that I have tonight, I would have never picked. And the reason I would have never picked it because I would have liked to get a, a, a sermon that was super motivational. And let's, let, let, by the time you're done, you want to reach, you want to fly through the ceiling. But I know this, we can't fly through the ceiling and we can't fly with our dreams and we can't go to the next level if we don't deal with something. See, every revival doesn't begin with shouting and screaming. There's some revivals that begin with a whole bunch of crying and mourning for our sins. Before, we, come on, before, my people, if they were, that are called by my name, if they would just humble themselves. Come on, we need, we want revival, but we want a true revival. We don't want no fake revival. We want, how, how do we know there's a real revival? People are repenting. People are crying out, say, God, forgive me for my sin. Lord, I've done wrong. Make me new. Fill me with your spirit. I'm tired of living the way I'm living. Come on, if there's anybody here that wants a true revival. We are moving towards, we're, this is what we're going to do. We're going to break a cycle, and we're going to start a new cycle. Because there's only, there's two cycles. One is a cycle of sin and defeat. A cycle of sin and defeat. A cycle of sin and defeat. Or, or a cycle, or a cycle of getting, of, of pleasing God right? Pleasing God. How many believe that your life should be pleasing to God? Do you even think about that as a believer? I, I think about that. It's pleasing God, obeying God, and victory. 
you cannot live a victorious life if you're I want you to you cannot live a victorious life in sin sin does not lead to a win we're gonna uh, someone's uh, I mean you just you could type you could write that in your phone sin don't lead to a win what'd you get sin don't lead. but but this week we're gonna cover a lot of things but let's get the foundation right tonight there's some, there's some sins that have easily entangled us. And you know what they are. We got to break it in the name of Jesus right now. We can't go tangled up into the future. We got to get set free. Come on. We got to get set free from the porn. We got to get set free from the anger. We got to get set free from unforgiveness. We got to get set free from, come on. We got to get set free from the lying, from the cheating, from the hustling. We got to get set free. Stop accepting it and just start realizing tonight starts my cycle of victory and ends my cycle of defeat. Can I hear an amen in the house? We are moving towards the true revival. I know we got churches from, I know a pastor from I an mean, Indio church out here. It's, it's from all the way from Indio. You guys are here. Pastor Obed's church is here. I know we got churches from other churches here but, but this is not a revival for the way this is a revival for the church of jesus christ this is a worldwide revival that's beginning so god is bringing world-class revivalists to this church tonight come on tomorrow morning tomorrow afternoon by the time we're done we're going to be right with god we're going to have vision from god we're going to have strategies come on we're going to be ready to go out and see what god has for us we're ready for the harvest we're ready for the revival let's get ready so let's pray father we just thank you for tonight i'm so grateful for everyone that's here tuned that's here in person in the overflows in our downtown arrowhead campus all over the world that are tuning in and i thank you lord that these next three days are days of consecration that we're separating to be close to you, to hear from you, be equipped by you. This will be an upper room experience. Then we'll see revivals in our churches. Something has to change. We can't continue doing the same things that we've been doing. We cannot, we cannot be lackadaisical. It's time for us, Father God, make your church just like you did on the day of Pentecost. Father, Father, we want your fire to fall, your Holy Spirit fire to fall upon us tonight. So we're ready, Father God, to go preach your gospel with power, to see souls get saved, disciples be made, and walk in the power of your spirit to cast out demons and lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. We thank you, Lord, that your word is the same. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. What you did then, you want to do now in your church. We thank you, Lord. Speak to us tonight. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Are you guys ready to receive from God? Turning a cycle of defeat into a cycle of victory. The word cycle is a repetitive pattern. Have you ever, have you seen the cycles that you've been in? Some of the cycles are secret cycles. You know the cycle. And there's been some repeated cycles that have been in your life. You go up, and then you go down, you're happy, then you're sad. You conquer the thing and then you go back to it. And what God wants you to know is that God did not save you. Jesus did not save you for you to live in a cycle of sin, addiction, and destruction, and defeat. It is possible to live a life in a cycle of victory after victory. This is what God is saying. We are now headed for those that desire to go into a cycle of victory. Jesus came to turn our cycles of defeat into cycles of victory. We need victory over sin. We want to walk in our authority of victory over the devil and all his demons. We got too many Christians that are being tormented by demons. You should be casting them out. You should be removing them. And you should be taking your authority over them. You as a Christian should not allow a spirit of depression to creep up on you and live in your mind and live in your family. 
Spirits of suicide, suicide need to go. Suicide, spirits of addiction to lust, we need to break them in the name of Jesus. I'm not here to condemn you. I'm here to let you know that that cycle of defeat and that cycle of sin can be broken in Jesus' name. Let's not go into our next season with the same old cycles. Stop hoping for things to get better. We're going to have to do something like this. We're going to have to acknowledge our sin and say, Jesus, I confess it. I confess this thing. Because you'll never overcome a sin that you're hiding. Be careful that you're not more impressed, you're not more focused on impressing people than you are with pleasing the Lord. Who cares if everybody thinks you're holy and righteous and this great leader? It doesn't matter. What matters is you being real. I don't care if you've been a pastor for 30 years. If you're struggling with a sin, let's deal with it now. I know this is not popular, but it's right. This is how Jesus started his ministry. Repent. Turn away. Because this idea, you'll never have a new life until you're sick and tired of the life you got. We got to stop ju justifying our sexual morality. We got to stop justifying, come on, our compromise. And we got to say, God's standards and his words haven't changed. Why are we changing it? There's no, two tw there's no 2024 Christianity. God's not updating the Bible for you to match up with your life. Well, it's 2024. God said, it don't matter. My, my, that's why I gave you my word, because I knew 2024 was going to come. And I knew that the church would become weak. Because a church that's full of compromise and sin is a weak, defeated church. If the devil has your private life, he has your public ministry. Let's get going. Repetitive pattern. V we need victory over sin the devil, all his demons. We need victory over every trial and tribulation. We, we need to get that faith back. I don't care what I'm facing, I'm going to overcome this. It's going to end in victory. We need, we need victory over depression, fear. We need victory over sickness and obstacles, over poverty and lack, confusion, and every single enemy that we face. God will never give you a battle that he's not having a vision of a victory for you. This is the prophetic word. The tide is shifting. The page is turning. A new chapter is beginning. Following Jesus always leads to victory. And when God gives you a victory, he just doesn't give you one victory. He gives you victory after victory, after victory, after victory, after victory. How you doing? Victorious. But what about the devil? What about him? For this purpose, the Son of God came to destroy the works of the devil. I just recognize I no longer need to be a victim because God has promised me victory in Jesus' name. I got good news for everybody that's listening, for everybody that's in this room. It doesn't matter how many defeats you've experienced. You might be on the biggest losing streak of your life. And God is saying, I turn losers into winners. First Corinthians 15, 57. But thanks be to God. Say it with me. Thanks be to God. Look at what he does. He keeps giving us victory through Christ, through, through, through our Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua, the Messiah. I thank God. He just keeps giving me victory. Through Christ. He just doesn't give me one victory. He keeps giving it. Because that's all God has is victory in him. He can't give you defeat because defeat isn't in him. I'm just trying to get your identity back right. We got too many Christian, Christian victims. 
poor me. You got to support you. All I do is give you victory. Get your mindset right. Stop letting sin distort your mind. Stop letting sin deceive you. Stop letting sin make you a compromiser. Now, understand, you could be praising God all here because this is exciting. I mean, even people that don't praise God, praise God today. There's some excitement in the room. But what we want you to do is be able to praise God with your private life at home. And then when you come here, you just explode all over everybody. Come on, let's God give God praise. He's a good God. He's worthy of praise. Let's praise Him with our lives. So let's go back into the, let's go back thousands of years ago. And there was a king that was in a cycle of defeat. And he was in a cycle of defeat because of the sin he kept going back to. He had a position. He was a leader. He was a king. Don't mistake your position for being right with God. We got too many people that have the pastor card, the apostle card, the, the prophet card, the, the Christian card. You got every card in the book, but you don't live none of them right. So the only problem, you got the cards that impress people, but the cards don't impress the demons that are chasing after you and your family. Amen. That's why God brought you in this room. we got to get right. Let's look at 2 Kings 13.1. Jehoaz, son of Jehu, began to rule over Israel in the 23rd year of King Joaz's reign in Judah. Someone just became a king. He became a ruler. Now, when you become a ruler, become a leader, become a mother, become a father... Your, your responsibilities have now increased. You will be held accountable to the level of your responsibility. The higher level you go, responsibility over people, the higher level of accountability. And I'm not saying if you're single, you could do whatever you want and run, run buck wild. But I'm saying when you become a parent, it just changes things to another level of responsibility because now you got to raise a child. Now, if you become a leader, if you become a pastor, everybody calls themselves pastors nowadays. I mean, I think you can get a pastor's degree online. Because just because you got a degree or someone ordained you to become a pastor doesn't mean that heaven backs your, your name up. Because we got to be a real one. So, so we, need gotta be, we need to become a real. I'm not talking about a religious one. I'm talking about a real one. That means when you got issues, you admit your stuff. You get right. If you fall down, you confess you fell down. Get back up. It's okay. Depends on the grace of God. But stop faking like you didn't fall. Because if you do, you develop a hardness towards the Holy Spirit. And a spirit of deception, the, a spirit of deception, what it does, it takes the place of the spirit of conviction. That's why you're wondering, well, how could this pastor do this? How could this leader do this? How could they have been doing this for years? Because a spirit of conviction left and a spirit of deception came in. Because it makes you think, sin is crafty. It makes you think because you've been doing it for so long and it looks like you're getting away with it, there is no payday. Let's keep going. So I didn't come for this one. But that's why God brought you here. We're, we're, we're looking for real revival. Come on, we need to get really right. We need to start, come on, bringing out the Holy Spirit. Come on, trusting the Holy Spirit to make us holy. Come on, it's time for the compromising church to end and the real church of Jesus Christ, the fired up church with the Holy Spirit to rise up. How can you reach them when you're just like them? You drink like them, you cuss like them, you watch porn like them, you're crazy like them. You party like them, but then you want to reach them. 
when salt loses its flavor, it's worthless. We got to get salty. Amen. Come on. I'm not talking about you being perfect. I'm talking about you getting right. I might not be perfect, but I'll tell you this. I am not who I used to be, and I'll tell you this. I don't allow sin in my life just to live in my life. If I mess up, I fess up, I get up, and I keep moving, but I'm not going to stay down for a week, two weeks, three weeks. You got to be careful that you're not one of those Christians that goes on vacation with the devil. What's done in Las Vegas stays in Las Vegas. Okay. You might be like Joe has here. Joe has the son of Joe began to rule. Now, he reigned in Samaria for 17 years. Just because God is allowing you to reign doesn't mean you're right. But this is the problem. He was a king, but he did evil. He did what was evil in the Lord's sight. He followed the, the example of Jeroboam, the son of Nabat, continuing continuing the sins that Jeroboam had led Israel to commit. So let's stop there for a second. He did evil. He did what was evil in the Lord's sight. Let's talk about some facts about sin. Hidden sin is not hidden. Because God sees it. Just because your wife don't know, your husband don't know, your kids don't know, the leadership doesn't know, your friends don't know, hidden sin is not hidden. He did sin in the Lord's sight. God sees it all. Look at the scripture, which should scare you a little bit. Should we, should we get scared? You know, you, you need to get back your fear of God. We need to get back our fear of God. Hey, we should be scared. You should be scared if you're living wrong, you could die like that. We got so much assurance of salvation that you live a creepy, un, unholy life using grace to justify your sin. Someone's going to get set free from alcoholism today. Someone's going to get set free from, from marijuana because you've been calling it a herb and you should be calling it a drug. Someone's going to get set free from fornication. That's sex out of marriage with your boyfriend, your boo, whoever you want to call them. And realize it's still unholy. And God, well, we, we just love each other. We, re, we kind of did a secret ceremony in our bedroom. As long as we're committed, that's all that matters. God says, no, you ain't married yet. You're not in covenant yet. And understand you right now, you're cheating. And while you're cheating, you're cheating on me. You're, you, well, baby, have you cheated on me? He goes, no, I haven't. You're cheating on God. Hallelujah. You know why we're dealing with this? Because we want revival. We got Christians that have open marriages. I, they're not Christians, but they act like they are. They call themselves Christians. Well, you know, we're committed to each other and just, just the way we are, but we bring other people to just spice it up. You know why I'm mentioning that right now? Because someone right now has been spicing it up. You got seasoning of hell on your life, and it's ready to destroy your whole family. It's ready to blow up in your life, your mind, your body. Come on, your children. It's ready to blow up because you cannot play with sin and win. Okay, Luke, 9, 8, Luke 8, 17. Nothing is hidden that won't be exposed. Now, the thing is, I don't know when it's going to be exposed, so this is what I'd rather do. I'd rather tell it myself. Let me tell you, I did it. I'd rather the pain of confession than the pain of being exposed. Because there's mercy for those that, that confess. If you say, I'm not dealing with it. I know there's going to be a price to pay, but the price to get right is worth it. You keep your integrity, you keep your name. The only way to lose your integrity is that you get exposed and you never expose yourself. This is a warning for somebody here. We're going to grow. 
but we're going to grow right. Nothing is hidden that won't be exposed, nor is there anything concealed that won't be made known and brought to the light. It, it, there's another version that says, because I like the rap version. The rap version says, there, nor there is anything concealed that won't be revealed. That's the rap version, hip-hop version. Eventually it comes to the service, all we're saying. Now this is not bad, this is good because God says confess your sins. Come on, uh, come on, confess your sins, I'm faithful. And I'm just to forgive you and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. When you confess your sins, I'm not going to judge you. When you confess your sins, I'm not going to push you down. When you confess your sins, I'm going to lift you up. I'm going to cleanse you. Come on, I'm going to give you your purpose. I'm going to fill you with my presence. I'm going to call you my child because this is what God specializes in. He specializes in sinners. Fact number one, hidden sin is not hidden. Hebrews 4.13 says, nothing in all the world can be hidden from God. He can clearly see all things. Everything is open before him. And to him we must explain the way we've lived. <laughs> Just imagine that you're explaining the craziness. <laughs> like, can you explain why you were taking that crack? And you're married with kids. Can you explain that to me? What are you going to say? You can't say Pastor Marco didn't mention the crack. I just did. <laughs> Don't blame me. No, and they're going to go. I never heard nobody say the crack was bad. They're going right to the service right here. Rewind. Boom, boom. There it goes. How are you going to explain that? Right? I'm not going to get into any more sins. We could get really bad around here. <laughs> but just imagine if every private sin that you committed this week was put on the screen and we just said, explain that to me. Explain. Can you explain that, please? <laughs> i tell you one. I have to confess. I might as well just start confessing right now. Yesterday I was on the freeway. And I'm fasting. Okay, I'm fasting. I'm fasting. But when you're fasting, anything that's there comes to the surface. So this is what happened. I'm trying, I'm putting my blinker to get in the lane. And this car keeps like, like getting in the lane. Instead of waiting for me to get in the lane, he won't get in the lane. He starts speeding up. So I'm trying to get in the lane because I didn't get on the freeway. I'm trying to get in the lane. I'm going on the freeway. I'm trying to get in the lane. So what he does, speeds up, and he starts blowing the horn like crazy on me. So you know what I did? I blew the horn right. Ah, ah. And my daughter's with me. She goes, what are you doing, Dad? I don't know. That guy got me mad. So and then I go, I better speed up before. Maybe it's a member of the church. That would be really embarrassing. Then I speed it up. And he stayed behind because he thought I was crazy. Like literally, he went down like 40 miles per hour on the freeway. We're like, I don't want to mess with that crazy guy. You might be here too. That was me right here. Was it you? Just raise your hand right now. Let's just make amends right now. But these are things we got to deal with, right? Because if you don't confess small, you'll have to confess big. See, anger that's not dealt with at a, at a small level, and you, can, you can stop blaming people for your anger. Take responsibility. Know it's a sin. Repent of it so God can set you free. Come on, and change your character. I'm not trying to act perfect. I, I mess up. I fess up. I tell you guys all the time. Now, the second fact about sin, our sin will be passed down to those we're leading. So the Bible says that the king was taking on, the committed, committing the same exact sins as Jeroboam. Now, Jeroboam was a king a hundred years earlier. It wasn't like he was just the last king. It's that this king set up a pattern. And the pattern was worshiping idols. 
and sex and all these things that they enjoyed. And no king up to this point changed the pattern. No one finally admitted, man, we've been sinning. And we've been losing. This is the crazy thing. Some of us are super hard-headed. I'm not ready. What is going to take for you to get ready? You lost everything already. Now, if you've lost everything, I got good news. God could get, come on, God can restore your life. But don't wait till it's too late. There's such thing as being too late. Amen. So, so the Lord, so this is what happened. He followed the example of Jeroboam, continuing the sins of Jeroboam that led Israel to commit sin. This all it means, unrepented sin will turn into generational sin, organizational sin, national sin. Generational sins turn into generational curses. One generation picks up with the other generation left off. One generation become one. The, the next generation becomes more sinful than the last generation. Now, this is what's going to happen. Either you're going to pass on a good example, or you're going to pass on a bad example. But one way or the other, the people that you're leading are going to follow. And that's why. We got so, the Bible says in the last days, there's going to be a great falling away. You know where the falling, falling away begins? When the pre pastors, the preachers, the teachers are falling away. We got, we got pastors that claim to be pastors and leaders and apostles, and they're literally living in sin and promoting it. Now, if the pastor's doing it, the congregation's going to do it. If you're doing it, your kids are going to do it. If you're cussing, your kids are going to learn cussing. Where'd you learn that? From you, mommy. When you talk to daddy. He's just, people are pointing fingers like, oh, that's where you learned that language from. Very colorful language. Let me, let me go ahead and wash your mouth with soap, son. Mommy, why, is that what you do when you cuss? You wash your mouth with soap? No, I haven't. That's probably what you need to do because it's very dirty. <laughs> Let's keep going. Are oh, you guys still laughing? That's good. Praise the Lord. Number three fact, a lifestyle of sin always turns into a cycle of defeat. The scripture says in verse three, so the Lord was very angry with Israel. You must understand the judgment and wrath of God. God is angry with sin. He is not okay with you living in sin and, and not repenting, calling yourself a believer. He, understand this, sin stores up wrath. Sin comes with eventual judgment. The Bible says this, it's a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living God. You know why we've lost our fear of God? Because we don't preach repentance in church no more. Now, we preach a side of Jesus. He loves you. Hallelujah. And then we say this. He loves you no matter what. Hallelujah. So you're telling me I don't need to change and I'm still good with God? Why don't you tell your wife that? I don't have to, like, I don't have to get right. I don't have to leave my adulteress, my little side mistress. I could have her and you too. You never dare you tell your wife like that. Your wife will turn gangster on you. Because some of your wives, I mean, they were from the hood. A 
Lisa would just give me the silent treatment and just cut me off. She's like, what? I go, it's, it, she, what? She, she would be like, you should have thought about that. And are you seriously asking me that you want her and me? Is, is that what you're saying t- to me? And let me start telling my daughters that. Because my daughters weren't gangster, but they got a little gangster in them, a little generational stuff to pass on to them. A little craziness. I'm talking about they'll turn into the mafia on me. My daughters. You understand that? So what I'm saying is what you wouldn't do with your family, what you wouldn't do with your wife, what you wouldn't do with your husband, you wouldn't do with your job, you stole something. Are you, are you going to steal again? I might. I might embezzle a little more. Or my, my, my account's not big enough yet. But why would you think you could do that with God? So now look what happens. A lifestyle sin now. So the Lord was very angry with Israel, and he allowed King Hazal of Aram and his son ben, Ben-Hadad to defeat them repeatedly. Because when, I want you to understand this. When you give in to a sin and won't repent of it, you must understand you give permission for the devil to rule and destroy your life. Demons come in your life only through permission. So why did God allow them to be defeated by Aram? He allowed them to be defeated because the enemy had authority over them because of their sin. And when the devil enters your life, he's out to kill, steal, and destroy. He's not playing. He wants to destroy your family, wants to destroy your future, wants to destroy your business, wants to destroy your money, wants to destroy your health, wants to destroy your mind. It's real. So, Pastor, why are you talking about things? Because I love you. I talk to my daughters like this if they're, like, involved in something. We've had conversations like that. we got to, like, we got to fix this. Why? Because I love them. We're not going to be a last day church that's tickling people's ears. We're going to be a revivalist church. We're going to see signs, wonders, miracles. And I'm not talking about signs, wonders, and miracles from the pulpit. I'm talking about signs and wonders and miracles through the people. Come on, this next revival is not going to be done through superstar. Come on, Christians. It's going to be done through everyday believers that are sold out to Jesus. People are going to be healed at Walmart, set free and saved. Come on, a sizzler. This is the problem. When you become a practicing, unrepentant sinner, you're not aware of the sinners around you because you're one of them. You don't look at the girl as a sinner. You look at the girl as a trick. Where can I get with ha ha baby ha ha ha? And it's not it's not ha 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 ha. It's not that. It's ha. Some of you guys are, ha, 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 you almost say hallelujah, but then it goes, no, ha, hell, because that's what's seeing you. All I'm saying, we got to break this thing in Jesus' name, amen? Come on, we got to break it in Jesus' name. We got to break it in Jesus' name. How are you going to reach a soul if you're trying to go to bed with her? How are you going to reach a soul if your insecurities won't allow you to find victory in Jesus and you see a guy validating you and you give yourself to him because you have no self-worth? You have no self-worth and you want to bring him to Jesus? This is the time you got to say no. See, the, see right here? I don't see no ring. And until I see a ring, there ain't no honey here. There's no honey. Oh, you're old-fashioned. No, I'm biblical. I live for God. I'm holy. In the name of Jesus, I command that spirit of lust. Ah! 
Come on, we need some women like that. We need some men like that. That when you show up to somebody somewhere, they know there's one of those holy ones. I'm telling you, I'm not perfect, but I do live a life to do what I can to please God. And that's my goal. And because of that, I'm aware of stuff around me. I went to Mathers Brothers last week. And I, I led, I led, I led, I led um, um, what's his name? Brian. His name's Brian. I've got Brian, he's youth pastor, not him. It's a, Brian's already saved, praise God. <laughs> but there's Brian. I led Brian to the Lord. I followed up on him yesterday. He goes, ah, he goes, to tell the truth, he goes, I need to make some change. I don't need to make some change. Give your life to the Lord. He said he was going to come tonight, but he had already bought tickets for some soccer game. I go, I'll let you go, go on a soccer game, but you know you're coming, right? He goes, I know. I was re- I'm going to bring my brother too. Okay, why? We, we, so n- then I go to the home goods. I go to home goods, and then while I'm, while, while I'm there, I pray for someone to get healed. Then I go to another home goods. Why are you going to home goods so much? I was decorating my office. I go to next home goods. I was one in Kuka. Puro Kukumunga. And then, and then, we, then I went to Redlands. And I prayed for somebody there. Why? Because it's ministry everywhere. You got to start living like this, pastors. You got to start living like this, leaders. How can, your, how can your people be evangelizing and you don't? Just because you're preaching up here doesn't quali- disqualify you from doing the everyday ministry you need to do. And just because they're clapping for you on Sunday, don't mistake it because God might not be clapping for you at the same time. You know what's happened? We become really good actors. You, I mean, some of us are so good, you should get an Academy Award. It's coming up pretty soon. <laughs> Living in sin for years, acting like you're not preaching, hollering, screaming, in sin. I'm not talking about you fell. I'm talking about you never got up. I'm falling. I can't get up. You never got up. If you could fall and stay in sin, you're probably not a Christian. Oh, Lord. I told you, I never thought I would be preaching this. But this is what God wants. He goes, we're going to start a revival for real. Come on, we're going to really start growing in the name of Jesus. We're going to, come on, we're going to expand the kingdom of heaven with true converts that are experiencing the full power of the Holy Spirit. Come on, we need the Holy Spirit. We need the power of the Lord first to transform our lives. Sin causes us to be defeated. It's just straight up. In Deuteronomy 28, 15, it says, However, if you do not obey the Lord your God, that means continue to sin, and do not carefully follow his commandments and decrees I'm giving you today, all these curses will come on you and overtake you for sure. Verse 25, the Lord will cause you to be defeated before your enemies. So why would the Lord cause you to be defeated? Because, this, because nothing will get you right until you start experiencing the repercussions of your wrong. Now, God doesn't allow you to be defeated so you defeated, stay defeated. God allows you to be defeated so you re, could repent and get tired of losing. Because as soon as you call upon the name of the Lord, he's ready to tag you deliver you, pick you up, and say, that's my son, that's my daughter. The cycle is broken, enemy, go! Someone's going to get delivered tonight in the name of Jesus. Last two things. One prayer to God can save us from the power of sin and break the cycle of defeat. So Joaz prayed for the Lord's help. The same king that was continuing to sin 
and following the sins of his ancestors and the sins of society. Be careful that you're not trying to get your morality from our society today. Your morality does not come from society. Your morality comes from the Bible. From the Holy Spirit's conviction. So Joash prayed for the Lord's help and the Lord heard his prayer. For he could see how severely the king of Aram was oppressing Israel. So I want you to understand, when God, when, when finally the king says, help me, Lord, we're tired of being oppressed. We're tired of losing. We're tired of the depression. We're tired of the suicidal thoughts. We're tired of the defeat. We're tired of the tormenting thoughts. We're tired of the sleepless nights. We're tired of the immorality. God is saying, I see it, bro, son. I've been waiting for you to call on me. And I've also seen the pain that you're going through and the suffering. But I couldn't help you because you never called on me. But if you call upon the name of the Lord, God guarantees you he will save you. It doesn't matter how deep your sin is. We serve a God full of mercy and grace. One prayer. A century, a century worth of oppression. One prayer. A decade of addiction. One prayer. Five years of severe depression. One prayer. So Joash prayed for the Lord's help, and the Lord heard his prayer. For he couldn't see how severely, God could see how severely the king of Aram was oppressed in Israel. So the Lord provided, so the Lord provided someone to rescue the Israelites from the tyranny of the Aramean, Aramean, Arameans. This is wonderful. Just call on the name of the Lord. He'll rescue you from destruction from your suffering, from your penalties. He'll make you whole. He'll make you well. He'll restore your health. He'll restore your money. He'll deliver you from the enemy. He'll set you free. He'll give you eternal life. You're just one call away. God's not trying to, come on, God's not trying to punish you. Jesus not come to judge, come on, to bring you judgment. He came to save you. He came to rescue you. He came to make you whole. And who qualifies is sinners. Come on, I don't care how long you've been living in sin. All you need is one call on Jesus and he will save you. And we'll end it with this last point. Now, this is what happened. The Lord provided someone to rescue the Israelites from the tyranny of the Arameans. And they started living in safety. But just because you get a touch from God, doesn't mean you're going to stay with God. You know how many people, they come, they get delivered, they come, they get healed, they come and get a breakthrough. And then once they're doing better, they're gone And this is the last point, but it's really serious. Going back to a lifestyle of sin will cause a cycle of accelerated reduction, destruction, and defeat. So when you go back, it accelerates the cycles. It used to be every three months. Now it's every month, every week. And sometimes it just gets to the point. It's every day, and the demon is so on you, and the oppression is so strong on you, you want to die. Look what it says. They continued to sin following the evil example of Jeroboam. They also allowed Asherah poles in Samaria to remain standing. The Asherah worship was deeply sensual, involving illicit sex, ritual prostitution. They would sacrifice children, practice sorcery, divination, fortune telling. That's what it was about. Finally, Jeho Jehoah's army was reduced to 50 chariots, 10 chariots, 10 foot, 10,000 foot soldiers. The king of Aram had killed the others, trampling them like dust underneath his feet. This is what the enemy wants to do. He just doesn't want you to be defeated. He wants to trample you like dust. That people won't even recognize who you are. Have you ever seen yourself there? Moving towards a place, who am I? Where am I? How did I, what? How did I get so low? What happened? I never thought I'd be here. And you're wondering, can it get better? And you're seeing yourself as a victim. I'm letting you know there's a God that loves you. 
Now, this story is not a story about badgering people. It's a story about let's just get right, be honest. And there's a God that can save you. He can set you free. He can empower you to go out there. Come on and help people and rescue them from the same things he's rescuing you from today. Come on, let's give some praise to the Lord. Come on, that died for you. He paid the price for every sin that you've committed so you can be forgiven tonight. You don't need to live under a guilt trip anymore because Jesus died on the cross. He took on the sins of guilty people. An innocent God lived a perfect life because he's infatuated with you. He prizes you. He loves you. Let's all stand up. We're going to dismiss this second. No one leave. This is just the first night. Are you guys ready? Come on. This, I had to do the, like, the dirty work. But I'm telling you this. Tomorrow night, it's going to be explosive in here. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be. I, I'm telling you, tomorrow night and Friday night, there's going to be an impartation of the power of God like you Really, have probably never experienced your whole life. This is not going to be a redo of something. You, man, those like, it's not going to be nothing like it's ever been. Because where God's taken us, we've never been. Get ready. Church, leaders, you're going to go back to your congregations with fire, clarity, vision, instructions, systems. Yeah, you're going to go back with the love and you're going to go back. It's going to be probably the most important three days of your life. I know it will be for us. And that's going to be tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. Then, then we got Friday night. But then we have the sessions in the morning. If you've not signed for the sessions in the morning, I'm going to be the first speaker tomorrow morning. And then, then we're going to have, like, some sessions. And we, and we got some breakouts. It's going to be amazing. There's not a whole bunch of tickets left. There's a few of them. And there's even some VIP tickets for some of the podcasts. So, but not much. But I, would I, if I were you, I would say, you know what? I got to be there. I got to get everything I, I can from God right now. This is my season. So now what we're going to do, church, is we're going to get right with God. That's it. We're going to talk, God loves you so much. I do too. My greatest reward is seeing you be free from the cycles of defeat and destruction and demonic torment and sin that you've been in. I don't take any pleasure in seeing someone suffer because good leaders don't. Their whole idea is, I just want to, I wish I could go inside of you and make decisions for you, but I can't. But I really believe this, that you have heard from God tonight. And it's time to call upon the name of the Lord. Say, God, I realize I've been sinning. And I tell you, I've been practicing something. But there's also some people here, some different calls. There's been a repetitive sin that needs to be broken tonight. This next season, God doesn't want you to go in there with this repetitive sin that gets worse as it goes. And the cycles are just getting faster. Used to fall every three months. I was falling every one month, every, fall, every weekend. It's, it's like, man, we got to, God wants us free. And he wants to get you on a cycle of joy, a cycle of victory, a cycle of ministry, a cycle of growing from one level to the next level can happen. Because churches, I'm going to talk to leaders for a minute. Because until you create the right cycle, your church can't get on that cycle. They're going to be on your cycle. And if, you don't, if your family can't get on the right cycle until you get on the right cycle. Because these are laws and they don't change. What you do, you pass on. You could preach the best message in the world on Sunday morning and get a million views on YouTube and your church still not grow. And the only reason is you're still giving your life. It's time. Leaders, mommies, daddies. Youth, it's time to give your life to Jesus. Forget about what the society says. It makes you think everybody's doing so. No, they're not. There's a group of people that are living for Jesus. They're saving themselves from marriage. They're holy. They live for God. They're one of the chosen few. You know what the sad thing is? I'm going to say this, and we're going to make a call. You know what the sad thing is? Most people have never met a real Christian. I never had a contact with one. How I know everybody I talked to never had a, like I talked to them. Has anybody ever told you this? No. Your whole life. You're 40 years old. No one ever shared this with you. No. First time I heard it. You want to give your life to Jesus? Yes. I didn't know. 
Okay. Come on. It's time to get there. Amen. Come on. This, ro this room is not big enough for us. Amen. We know that we're going to expand throughout. Come on. The world, the nation. Come on. We have to blow out walls, whatever it takes. But we're making room for your sons, your daughters. Come on. Your mama, your daddy. Come on. God's not just starting a fire in you. He's going to spread it from one generation to the next generation to the next generation. We are breaking the cycle, the generational curses tonight. Okay. If you say, Pastor, that's me. I want to break a cycle of defeat. And I want God to forgive me. Understand. It's only when you confess your sins can you get set free from your sins. You'll never get set free trying to hide it, cover it up. It's time to get right. Let's enjoy the next three days. If that's you, you say, man, there's something I need to surrender tonight. I need to get set free. The cycle of this, this defeat has to end tonight. Leave your seat and come up here real quick. This is what's going to happen. God's going to set you free tonight. You, your family, it's happening tonight. Come on, just come up here. Come on, come up here. Come on, come up here. Come up here. You're a leader. Come up here. Come on, don't downplay it. Come on, don't downplay it. Take it serious. Move to the next generation. Come on, come up here. Surrender it all tonight. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand. Come on, surrender it tonight. Get filled with the Spirit. Get set free. Come on, they're coming now. 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 It's time to get set free. It's time to start over. It's time for a new beginning. There's no sin that Jesus cannot set you free. Online, Arrowhead Campus. Come on, come forward. Come forward online. Just stand up right there. Come on, church, they're still coming. Come on, this is the beginning of revival in your family. There's going to be a domino effect upon your life, upon your kids, come on, upon your future, upon your ministry. Hallelujah, still coming. They're still coming. Make, make some room here. Let's, let's bring everybody out. Let's touch them in. We still got one more row we can put in here. Hallelujah. Tomorrow night, you don't want to miss it. It's going to be powerful. Get ready. This is what I'm going to... Don't try to come tomorrow night. Come tomorrow night. I'm coming. So I say, I'm coming. All right. They're still trying to fit in. Let's see if there's room over here. I just want to make as many people as we can. Let's move the chairs back if we have to. Hallelujah. Tomorrow you want to be here in the morning. So I'm going, to, I'm going to talk about developing the right mindset so you can start experiencing growth in your life. I'm telling you, it's going to, it's, you don't want to miss it. I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay. Get ready. Get ready. Okay. Hallelujah. Okay. I want, one, one last thing I want to say before I, leave, before I pray. There's somebody out there. This is the reality. And I want to just give you the raw truth. You're a human being, of course. And there's nobody here in this room that hasn't sinned. There's nobody better than nobody. That's why Jesus said, he who, has, who, he who does not have sin casts the first stone. And nobody could. Because we've all sinned. We've all fallen short. We all have issues. True. But understand this. I talked to a lady this week. Um, at Long, Longhorn Steakhouse. I ate a salad over there. <laughs> so I talked to her about the Lord and I asked her, honey, if, are you right with God? If you were to die right now, she's a great waitress. Her name was Amber. Amber, you're awesome, you've been a great waitress. But I care about you and if today were your last day on earth, do you know you'd go to heaven or not? She goes, I think I'll go to heaven. And I go, why? What, what makes you think you go to heaven? And she goes, I'm a pretty good person. And I go, Amber, you are. You're, I mean, you, you, you're a great waitress. You really are a good person. But the problem is, no one's going to get to heaven because they're good enough. 
They're going to get to heaven because they know that they're sinners and they need a savior. How many sins does it take to disqualify you from heaven? One. We've all sinned over and over and over. So I told Amber, there's only one person that can save you. You can't save you. Religion will tell you you got to save you, but you can't save you. Salvation and for eternal life is a gift. You don't earn it. It's given to you. And you can receive eternal life now. And I'm telling you, there's somebody here that eternal life, eternity, one day you're going to breathe your last breath. And you'll stand before God and answer for your life. But there's only one answer. Jesus, I know I'm a Savior. And then that's that Wednesday night, I called on Jesus. And you forgave me my sins. And you gave me the gift of eternal life. Your faith has to be in Jesus alone. It cannot be in you. It cannot be in a religion. It cannot be in a church. Your faith must be in Jesus. There's only one name to call on to be saved. So I'm going to ask one more person. Because there's somebody here that you got to surrender everything to God. Tonight's your night. Come on, tonight's your night. Tonight's your new beginning. And this is your night. And God is saying, come on, I've came for you. I want to change your life. Come the way you are. I'll save you. I'm going to count to three. They say, Pastor, I'm not sure where to die. I go to heaven. But I want to give my life to Jesus. One. I want to give my life to Jesus. Raise your hand. Two. I want to be forgiven of my sins. I want to know if I leave this place, I would have eternal life. That I'd be forgiven. One, two, three. Raise your hands all over this building. Raise your hand all over this building. I see those hands. Hallelujah. Come on. Those that raise their hands, and even if you don't raise your hand, come up here real quick. Just take a step. Come up here. Let's give them a hand as they're coming up. Come on. Someone's giving a lot to Jesus. They are here. Come on. There's more. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. All right. They're coming. All right, let's pray. The Bible says if you confess your sins, God is faithful and just to forgive you. He'll forgive you. Let go of your guilt trip. Forgive yourself. We've all messed up. Who cares? God loves you. And God can restore your life. Break the cycles. Make you new. Empower you. He has a great call upon your life. Let's pray. Bow your head. Say, say this. Say, Jesus. I thank you for loving me so much that you brought me here tonight to speak to me. I felt like you were talking to me. Thank you, Jesus. I know that I'm a sinner. I've been in cycles of defeat, cycles of addiction, cycles of sin. I know that you're the only one that can save me, set me free, and give me a new cycle of victory after victory. Jesus, forgive me of all my sins. Set me free and fill me now with your spirit, with your Holy Spirit. From this day forward, I will live for you for the rest of my life. I am saved. I'm born again. I am a follower of Jesus Christ. And devil, get out of my mind. Get out of my body. Get out of my family. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. We're going to pray with you. We want to help you on your next step. For some of you, you need to get baptized. We have classes for you, Holy Wars. One, two, three, four. We want to get you going. We're going to have a big baptism coming up pretty soon. And if you've not been baptized, we want to make sure you get baptized. God bless you, church. We love you. God bless you. Destiny Church, God bless you. Nice seeing you guys here. All the churches that came, God bless you. We're going to see you tomorrow morning. It's going to be awesome. We're going to get equipped in the morning. We're going to gain some wisdom in the morning. Come on, we're going to get an impartation in the morning. But right now, we're going to pray for you. If you need freedom from depression, if you need to get healed, stay right here. We're going to pray for you. We're believing that the cycle is broken now in the name of Jesus.